Welcome to iLecture Online and here's our first example of how to solve a problem, a change of state problem when the, con when the pressure stays constant. So we called it an isobaric process and just to remind everybody we have four different kinds of processes that we're going to uh, look into and so we're starting with our first one called isobaric or where the pressure stays the same. And so in this case uh, looks a lot like the one that we did in the previous video but we have some added information here. So let's say we have a, a gas that starts out at a pressure of 1.5 atmospheres. Of course, since the pressure doesn't change, it ends up at 1.5 atmosphere. The pressure doesn't change, but it gets compressed from an initial volume of 15 liters to a final volume of 2 liters. So the gas is being compressed. Uh, we have one mole of gas within the container, and the gas is diatomic. So that means there's two atoms per mole. We always want to put down the two equations. The first equation here is the first uh, law of thermodynamics, and the second one is the, the, the uh, PV equals nRT, which is the, the gas equation for ideal gases. And so typically, we want to find out all the other things that, we're not, that, that are not given. For example, we want to know the initial temperature, the final temperature, the amount of heat exchanged between the gas and the surroundings, the amount of work done by the gas, and the, the change in the internal energy. So we're always looking for the variables that are not given. Can we find out or can we figure out what those are? Well, we usually can, and the order of that varies sometimes, so really there's no set pattern how to do that, but there's a general structure to the methodology, so let's start with this. What I like to do is I like to write down a PV diagram, so we have pressure on the vertical axis, volume on the, um, on the horizontal axis, and I want to draw this thermodynamic process, so if, since it's an isobaric process where the gas doesn't change, you have an initial um, point and a final point and notice that uh, the pressure for both points is the same and so we go from one to the other. Now in this particular case the volume gets decreased so we're traveling from right to left so this is the initial state and this is the final state and the pressure remains the same so this is P1 equals P2 and equals 1.5 atmospheres. Okay. We also note that our initial volume can be found by going straight down. This is our V1, and our final volume is right here, which is our V2. We go from right to left in this case. We know that this is equal to 15 liters, and this is equal to 2 liters. All right, so that's what's given, and graphically we now have a pretty good feel of what's going on. So also note, uh, this is that our isotherms, and maybe I'll use a different color for that, let me use red for the isotherms, the isotherms tend to run like this, and like this, and like so, and notice that this is higher temperature, so this is high temp uh, to the right, and low temp to the left. So we can see that if we go from 1 to 2, we go from a higher temperature to a lower temperature. We may not know what those temperatures are, but at least we understand when we do a isobaric process and we go from a higher volume to a lower volume, we also will go from a higher temperature to a lower temperature. All right, now, how do we find the temperature at our starting point? Well, we are given the number of moles. We know that it's diatomic, which in this case doesn't matter. We also know the initial pressure and the initial volume, and then if we use this equation, PV equals nRT, we can solve that for temperature. So let's start with the equation, PV equals nRT, which means that the temperature is equal to the pressure times the volume divided by the number of moles and the gas constant. Now, of course, since we're looking for the initial temperature, we then, of course, want to put the initial pressure and initial volume in there, and remember, we want to convert those numbers to standard units. The pressure is 1.5 atmospheres, so we have 1.5 times 101,300. So 101,300 pascals, or newtons per square meter, is atmospheric pressure. Since it's one and a half times atmospheric pressure, we put in the one and a half. Volume one, we start out at 15 liters. Now we have to convert from liters to cubic meters, and the conversion is that we need 1,000 liters to make one cubic meter, and so we convert from 15 liters, we move the decimal place over three places, and so that means it's 0 0.015 cubic meters. We divide that by the number of moles, one, and the constant, 8.315, that would be uh, joules 
per um, per Kelvin times small. There we go. And I have a calculator here somewhere. Let's find out what our initial temperature is. 1.5 times 101,300. Oh, mm, uh, times 0.015. Uh, okay, and then we divide that by 8.315 equals. And we have initial temperature of 274 Kelvin, which is just about the freezing point, one degree above freezing point. All right, now what about the final temperature? Well, whatever the result is, you know that it should be less because the process causes to move to the left on the PV diagram. So T2 is equal to P2 V2 divided by the number of moles times R. And so you can see that the only thing that changes here is the volume because, of course, the pressure stays the same. So we have 1.5 times 101,300, that's newtons per square meter, uh, times 0 0.015 meters cubed, divided by one mole, and 8.315 joules per mole times Kelvin. All right, so the only difference here is that the uh, volume, oh, I got the wrong volume in here. We went from volume one to volume two, and volume two is only two liters, so we have that. So we take the initial amount and we divide by 0 0.015 and we multiply by 0 0.002 and now we have a new temperature of 36.5 Kelvin. So that would be the final temperature of this process. All right. So next we want to calculate, so we, we were able to find those two. So next we're going to find the heat exchange, the work done, and the change in internal energy. Since this is, a, this is a constant volume or constant pressure uh, process here, in a constant pressure process, we know that the work done is equal to the pressure times the change in the volume. See, since pressure stays the same, that's like a constant, and now all we have to do is multiply times the change in the volume. So this is equal to the pressure, which is 1.5 times 101,300 newtons per square meter. And now we have to multiply times the change in the volume. Now, of course, remember, change in volume is from initial volume to the final volume, or final minus initial. So it would be 0.002 cubic meters minus 0.015 cubic meters. And notice that this is going to be a negative quantity, which means it's negative work done. That means it's work done on the gas, not work done by the gas. If work done is by the gas, then we get a positive work. If work is done on the gas by compressing the gas, then work is negative. All right, so let's go ahead and work that out. 1.5 uh, times 101,300 times 0 0.013 and negative equals, and the work done is equal to minus 1,900 and 75 joules. So 1,975 joules of work are done on the gas. All right, that takes care of work done. Now, what else? Well, we have the equation here, first, uh, the, fir the uh, first law of thermodynamics. What do we do next? Do we go for Q, the amount of heat exchanged, or do we go for delta U? Well, we don't know how much heat is exchanged, but we can figure out the change in internal energy because we know the initial and the final temperature. We know the difference in temperature, and so we know that the change in the internal energy is equal to N times C sub V times the change in the temperature. Since that is now known, we can go ahead and say, well, this is equal to one, one mole, C sub V. So for that, we have to know what kind of gas we're dealing with. We're dealing with a diatomic gas. So for diatomic gas, C sub V is 5 over 2 times the gas constant. And the change in the temperature is final minus initial. So the final temperature was 36.5 minus the initial temperature, which is 274. Notice that, um, again, the, uh, the difference here is negative. That means there's going to be a negative change in internal energy. The gas is actually going to lose heat. All right, let's figure out what that is. So we have 36.5 minus 274, multiply times 2.5, and multiply times R, which is 8.315 equals, and you can see here that the change in internal energy is equal to minus 4,937 joules. Now, we're doing this much work on the gas, 
That's why work is negative. And the gas is losing energy. So where's all that energy going? Because we're doing work on the gas. So doing work on the gas is like putting energy into it. But then the final state means that the gas actually lost a lot of heat. So therefore, the only way we can make that work is when we use the first law of thermodynamics. And we solve this for Q. We get Q equals delta U plus W when you move the minus W across the other side. So we have Q is equal to the change in internal energy plus W. And let's go ahead and <coughs> work that out. So delta U is a minus 4,937 joules. And we, and we add to that the, ch the work done on the gas. So that would be a minus 1,975 joules. And then you see them together. 4937 plus 1975, we get a total of minus 6912 joules. Now, let's make sure we understand the prepositions here. In the first law of thermodynamics, the change in the internal energy of the gas is equal to the heat added to the gas minus the work done by the gas. Well, we're not adding heat to the gas, we're taking heat away, so this becomes a minus quantity. And since the gas is not doing work, we're doing work on the gas, then work becomes negative, and a negative times a negative makes it a positive. And, oh yes, definitely, obviously, but then, because we're solving our equation for Q, and we move the W over to the other side, of course, we then have to add that negative quantity. So what that means is that the total heat lost by the gas is the combined 4937 and 1975 or 6912. And that is how you find all the state variables that are not known from the initial givens and the Q, W, and delta U, with other words, the heat exchange between the gas and the environment, the work done by the gas or on the gas, and the change in the internal energy. And so we have found all the answers. That's how you do a problem like that.